actually our 5G radios which we're building. Okay. Uh, um, so, uh, and then this is our kind of Wi Fi 6 um, and uh, you know, small cell solutions. We have then we have some of our fiber optics. Some of those are built for uh, data that will be required in a 5G environment. So the whole premise uh, is is from three or four angles. You know, one we believe, you know, 5G, uh, you know, will be probably next four to five years a massive amount of network investment that will be required hmm. by telecom operators, hmm. uh, but also with you know data center players and others to kind of build this network. Uh, and we see a real opportunity here. Uh, so while STL has been historically been known uh, on the optic fiber side, and that's probably still where you know we have a, a very strong uh, you know global presence. We are you know in that top three or top five in the world. Uh, we also felt that especially in a five G environment, there will be a convergence of both the fixed network like the the optic fiber, but also the wireless network. And uh, so to that extent, uh, over the last few years, we've also uh, started building out our own uh, wireless uh, solutions, uh, where on such kind of products on the radio part, we would actually compete with a uh, Huawei, Ericsson or Nokia. Um, and we're also very proud that, uh, you know, essentially uh, what we are pioneering is a new technology, uh, which is called Open RAN, Open Radio Access Network. Uh, and that's something that we have more than now 350, uh, you know, network engineers, software engineers who are building out uh, the software they required uh, for the 5G network. And then uh, we are uh, looking at Indian partners who can then manufacture the radio uh, physically. So we have partners like VVDN and Sankhya Labs, etc. Mm -hmm. So very proud also that it's, it's truly a full India stack mm -hmm. that we have built a, a made in India 5G solution. I think, look, uh, you know, if you look at some of the data points, mm. uh, today India deploys one tenth of the fiber every year uh, that China does, right? And if you look at it largely, both the economies or both the countries have, you know, the same uh, population. So there clearly a tremendous amount of just fiber infrastructure would need to be deployed uh, as we go from 4G to 5G. So I think that's the, the first part. Our own estimate is that probably four to five times more fiber will be required uh, to deploy a high quality, uh, you know, 5G network. And by that, I mean, you know, probably we would need to showcase at least about 200 to 300 Mbps download and about 50 to 60 Mbps upload. That's when, when we look at 5G, that's what, you know, the network we need to build out. Uh, so to make that happen, um, one, I think certainly, as I said, the, the fiber network needs to get built out at probably four to five X of what has been built so far. Mm -hmm. uh, we also need uh, a lot of uh, both towers, small cells, both for outdoor and indoor coverage, because I think that's something very important. Data, about 80% of the data will be consumed indoors. So while we talk of large macro towers and cell sites, you will need also a lot of small cells and indoors uh, small cells like the solutions we have launched. Our solution is called Garuda. Mm -hmm. And so such kind of solutions will be very important to also be deployed at scale. And so that as you go from outdoor environment to indoor environment, you're able to get seamless, you know, 5G connectivity. Look at it from one perspective, uh, you know, there's probably already north of 70 countries that have mm -hmm. deployed 5G mm -hmm. and more than 200 or even 300 operators around mm -hmm. these countries are deployed. So um, it's really important, again, that we don't go into a lot of debate of what will 5G be used for to be really mm -hmm. etc. Every time we go on 3G to 4G and then now go to 5G, probably we have some of these questions. So I think fundamentally, I do see that commitment from the government and from the operators to get 5G to happen as fast as possible. I think the other part we should be mindful of is that we still see 5G devices probably in the 15,000 rupee range, which has to start coming down very quickly to 10,000 and to 5,000 so that we can also have larger scale adoption. So I think that's something probably more from the chip and the mobile side that needs to happen. Um, I think from the recommendations to, to TRA, I think without going into specifics, I think the overarching theme has been two things. Oh. One is to provide uh, it at, at we have you know when you look at global benchmarks you have mm. some extreme cases like in China where they are given free of cost mm. and you have other countries which have looked at it and and provided very very 
uh, and certainly in the mid band spectrum have provided the spectrum at, at a very reasonable cost. Mm -hmm. The second part is also to look at ways that the government can provide up to 100 megahertz uh, of chunks of uh, spectrum because having contiguous spectrum is also a critical part of how the operators can then provide mm -hmm. high quality service. So these have been largely the areas of where we have recommended. And plus, obviously, you know, there's still a lot of challenges in India in terms of right of way for deploying the fiber network. So that's where the government, both center and state, need to really find ways to make a single window authority, give more empowerment to the operators and to players like us to deploy it and self-certify that the, that the network has been built in the right way without harming the environment or without, uh, you know, destroying the ground or anything else. I think the, uh, the, the way we're looking at it is uh, three or four areas. Uh, one, certainly in the core uh, business on the, on the optic fiber and cable, uh, there's a lot of innovations, not only on how do we, uh, you know, how do we provide ultra high capacity uh, but also in, in a very, very low form factor. So just to share with you as an example, um, if you see this, this is one of one of the cables we have innovated and we're further working on. Uh, this is the world's highest capacity fiber cable. And this is deployed uh, into, you know, the leading uh, data centers in the world, currently going into a data center in the US. So these are kind of innovations as you see more and more data centers come up globally and also in India. They are looking at such kind of innovations where typically for this amount of fiber, this has 7,000 strands of fiber in it. You would typically need this size of a, uh, of a cable. And our innovations on the glass, on the fiber and cable have been able to reduce it to such a you know, small form factor so that it becomes much easier for the, for the data centers to deploy this and then transmit massive amounts of, you know, multi terabits of data across the data center. So these are very critical because also in a 5G environment and with AI and ML Web 3.0 coming up uh, and also the metaverse, these solutions will be very important to provide the infrastructure, the digital infrastructure to enable these kind of applications. So this is one area. The second area, I think, is clearly on the, on the 5G part that we were touching on earlier. We will continue to innovate and build a lot of the radios that are required on both dual band as well as tri band, because again, the 5G will be deployed across multiple bands of spectrum. So our innovation will be how to create the smallest form factor with the least energy requirement, which is also environmentally friendly, and then is able to still uh, provide both dual band and tri band uh, solutions uh, to for the telecom operators. <music> We have set ourselves, uh, uh, you know, three very, very important targets on the sustainability side. And in many ways, we are industry leading or probably global leading in our field for all of those. Number one, we have decided and, and agreed on a target of net zero carbon emission by 2030. Uh, okay. Second is we have a, uh, targeted net uh, water positivity by 2030. And uh, especially given we are very intensive on the manufacturing side, we have set a target of net zero waste to landfill um, across our manufacturing sites globally uh, by 2030 as well. And this is important because we have manufacturing sites across India, China, Brazil, Italy, as well as we have manufacturing sites in the US that is coming up as well as the UK. So it's very important for us to have these sustainability practices uh, across. And uh, so far through our sustainability efforts, we have impacted more than 2 million lives already. Thank you.